Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we are going to be profiling Greninja Break. It's actually one of the most successful lists in the last few regionals. It got a fourth place finish at Madison with Jake Hewitt, and it also won the Melbourne region, uh, Regional Championships with Joey Ho as well. So a very powerful deck. Um, I have to grit my teeth and say that because I personally never get along with it. Um, but it does have inherent raw strength. It's a very powerful non-GX deck uh, with ability lock. It's just so important right now in the format. And the damage you can rack up when you do eventually build into your Greninja breaks is too much for many to handle. And that's why Greninja has been doing well in these recent tournaments with a few brave enough to pilot it. So let's jump into the list. First of all, um, I think this is three cards different from uh, Jake's list and they're all the Frokies. I'm playing three of the 70 hit point Frokies because I think 70 hit points is really good. Uh, it means that you can attach turn one to your Frokies without fear of being hit with an energy drive. And that doesn't seem like much, but establishing splash energies early is going to be really big for you. Um, and it means if you are going to get a hit with random shuffle draw from the opponent's side, like an N, that's one less card in your hand. And that's the difference between bricking and not bricking with Greninja. Very fine margins, as you all know with the deck. So trying to thin one extra card can be really nice for you. And just planting an energy on a Froakie turn one is just something nice that you can do. So that you don't have to have that headache going into your second turn. So yeah, I like 70 hit point Froakies. I think they are very good. I'm still going to play one bubble Froakie to have the option to use this guy. Because... At the end of the day, you play Brooklet Hills, you can pull out the one-off copy and it can bail you out in really random spots. Um, I still value Bubble, of course, but that's why we're only playing one copy of this guy. From there, we'll play the also 70 hit points Frogadier for his water duplicates. Not going to play the new one, of course, uh, because you're going to try and duplicates out as many as possible. And again, <clears throat> if you're going to try and get cute by putting in one copy of the um, new one or multiple copies of the new one, it just ruins your consistency of hitting dupes. And Greninja and consistency don't always go hand in hand at the best of times. So you want to just play four copies of this guy. Don't start risking it and getting fancy for that extra 20 damage here and there. It won't be worth your while. From there, we're going to play four copies of good old Greninja. Shadow Stitching is still possibly one of the best attacks of all time. Uh, it does for a colorless energy 40 and uh, your opponent's... Pokemon in hand, in discard pile, and in play have no abilities, so that's really, really good. Turning all those off, great for Malamar, of course, great for Buzzor players who rely on Lycanroc as well as uh, Octillery, most importantly. Um, Octillery in a bunch of decks, Zoroark GX, uh, even Oranguru. Like, there's so many abilities out there right now that turning them off is just going to be really, really good for you, and it really slows the game down to a snail's pace, and that's what you need, really, for Greninja, so that you can build up into your breaks and then start swinging and making sure that your board position is way better than the opponent. So Shadow Stitching makes that all possible. It's only 40 damage. We do play three choice bands, which is on the higher side, which was what Jake opted for. And I really like the theory behind that because you want to stitch the whole game pretty much. So you need to buff up this little 40 damage each turn as best you can. It does have Moonlight Slash for us. Again, that water energy does 60. You can return a water energy uh, from this Pokemon to your hand if you do it as 20 more. Just because of how the meta is, you're probably ability locking almost throughout the entire game. But Moonlight Slash is a way to accelerate your win condition if either you're far enough ahead just in the race alone that you can Moonlight Slash or just to finish off the game. It's closer than what Shadow Stitching would be for damage. So bear in mind this is an attack you can use here and there. More often than not, it's safer to Stitch just to try and get the opponent out of options for game, to be honest. So there you go. From there, three Greninja breaks. Turn your heads now, because Pokemon <laughs> Online still has not fixed the breaks. I don't know why, but sure. Um, 170 hit points turns out to be pretty tanky when people don't have their abilities. And Giant Water Shuriken is an absurd ability. You get to discard a water from your hand and place six counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon anywhere on their board. So nothing safe. Hopefully you can be pinging the bench if they're trying to build something up. Or you can hone in on the active with one or two breaks because, of course, you can retreat out of one and use the other one because this ability is only when it's active, of course. So, um, yeah, really, really good ability. And it just essentially does swarm the board. If you get two breaks up, you're in a very happy state most of the time. So that's what we look for. From there, very thin on the Pokemon counts. A 1-1 Starmie line, you want to play the free retreat Staryu because then it doesn't hinder your early game setup. 
and Starmie for that space beacon. Once during your turn, you can discard a card from hand. If you do, put two basic energy from your discard pile into your hand. Really good exchange, of course, because water energy is exactly what you want in the hand for this ability here on the Greninja break. So it's a very nice 1-1 one -one line that you can play. Alongside Brooklyn Hill makes it fairly easy to search out. And one copy of Tapu Lele GX, just pretty much solely for Wonder Tag to get us out of dead draw. And that's always nice for Greninja. Now you have uh, four extra outs in the Ultra Balls to get you into a supporter turn one. Well, five if you copy the actual Lele itself, if you count that as a target. So in theory, you have consistency boost just by playing one copy of a card, which is really good for you. It is obviously a hindrance to put a two prize Pokemon down, and it's horrible if you start it, but it's a risk you take when playing Greninja. Um, this is actually very low on the Pokemon sort of side. Uh, typically, this is the Greninja line you'll always see. 1-1 one, one Starmie, sometimes you see a 2-1 line. Sometimes you see additional partners alongside this Lele, like Espeon or Feeny. I'll talk about those later on. They're not in this list, though. Instead, we're going to have high counts of item cards in its place. One copy of Rescue Stretcher. It's an immediate way to get a Pokemon from the discard pile, or you can get three back and shuffle them all in alongside a Super Rod, which does the same thing, but it's more versatile, so it can get back energies. Energies recovered aren't that important um, if you get your Starmie online, but if you don't, it's really important so you can keep getting water energies back alongside Pokemon. So that's why you play the split, one one of each, rather than just two stretchers, which can be more immediate because the Super Rod can bail you out if Star parts of Starmie are prized or, or if you're under like Ability Lock. Um, then again, you need the water energies a lot less if you're under ability lock, but still, you get the point. Um, and then we're going to be playing two ofs of some other important item cards. The Field Blower, of course, can free you of ability lock if you're against Garbodors. It's also going to be nice against Parallel Cities because they can not only limit your bench size, they can also limit your damage output um, when facing the other side, the red side of Parallel City, your way. So getting rid of these is going to be important. It can also be nice just for stalling things. Uh, with getting rid of float stones and stuff like that, make life a little bit more awkward for the opponent. Going to play uh, two copies of Max Potion. This is on the high side, really, for Greninja. Typically, you see one or zero, but the full two copies is really trying to capitalize on the potential tankability of Greninja in this format. Um, not only does it help your early game, because Buzzwell can do jet punches, and those sort of 30 damage snipes can set up Greninjas for later down the line. Now you can remove those, but also any Greninja in the active getting hit by things like uh, Malamar players using um, Dormings Necrozma, which base damage is 120. You can tank those hits, max potion back off, reattach, and start stitching all over again. It's going to be really, really irritating for the opponent for decks that can't get one hit KOs, and that's huge for you. So the max pots in two copies is a really good call right now, uh, as we've seen. From there, you're going to also play two Enhanced Hammers. E-Hammer, again, is going to be your main defense in the early game. Seeing as though we're not attacking anything for damage... The opponent is able to build up their board as best they can. E-Hammer puts them back a peg or two, trying to get rid of DCEs, trying to get rid of um, strong energies, some of the most notable ones, even beast energy in some like Ultra and Acrosma decks. So do bear that in mind. E-Hammer trying to slow down the tempo of the opponent in the early game. It's really our only defense but while we're just sort of letting the opponent pound through us for the first one or two prizes. That's just the way Greninja plays, really. So then we're going to max out as much Pokemon search as possible for Evo Soda and for Ultra Ball. So you can definitely see the intent that Jake went for. Get as many Pokemon online as possible and keep building. Every turn you want the things that evolved that turn to grow a stage. Every single turn you want to keep building those stacks pretty much until you get into the big golden boys themselves. Uh, that's really all you're looking for. So having as many outs to these as possible seems like a really good idea. From there, going to be playing three Brooklyn Hill. Uh, as our good early game search to get us multiple Frokies down, hopefully, <coughs> to defend against getting, like, Donked and stuff. Also gets us into Starmie, which is very valuable as well, because once... Oh, sorry, it gets him to Star U. Once Starmie's online, your Greninja breaks are just raining a lot of damage counters down each turn, while still stitching the opponent is really gross. To the supporter line, it's not the thickest I've ever seen um, in terms of draw support for a Greninja. It's playing 10 total. Still pretty high on the scale of things. Looking at things like Buzzwell decks right now, they're normally just playing like eight draw supporters, but of course they do have Octillery to fall back on. Uh, so it is not the highest count I've ever seen of supporters with only two Sycamores. Um, but at the same time, it's still a decent chunk. You have that Lele. I think really um, Jake's made the statement that E-Hammers and Max Potions are too important not to play, and he doesn't want to make compromises anywhere else. So... 
I guess that's reasonable overall. Um, I think just looking at the baseline of this list, I think the recovery in terms of stretcher and super odd is a little bit on the low side. Sometimes you see three slots dedicated to that, and sometimes you see an extra slot here or there dedicated to a supporter card. But he really has shown how important max potion and enhanced hammers are to play for the survival of Greninja in this volatile format. Also, he's playing three choice band, which is different to many Greninja players. Oftentimes, people find the golden number to be two. Uh, but him going all out for the three copies means that you're just that much you're doing that much more damage when you actually get your uh, strategy going and start stitching away so um, again you're just trying to get there at the end of the day and having extra damage never hurt anyone so yeah three copies of choice band rounding out with 10 energy of course we're going to play four splash i've already said that he wants to be building every single turn and he's all about searching out pokemon and having more every single turn the splash energies help in that regard, of course, because as you're getting carved through turn by turn in the early game, you're recovering those pieces, putting them back to the hand, plonking them back down onto the board so that you never really deplete your board state while your opponent is taking prizes. They're not really changing the fact that you're still eventually building up to Greninja's, so splash energies are vital for this deck as well. Running out with the six waters, of course, we're going to synergize this with the Starmie, the Super Rod, and we're going to be spamming shurikens whenever possible. It's a pretty healthy count. Again, sometimes you see 9, but I think 10 is what many people land on uh, in terms of energy cards. So very, very standard overall. So let's talk about some of the other tech Pokemon which have been in some lists lately. Uh, Tapu Fini GX was played uh, for a long time. Uh, here we go. I'll eventually find it. Here we go. Uh, for its Tapu Storm GX attack mostly. Um, again, just like the Enhanced Hammers, you're trying to have something to do in the early turns while you're building Greninja's um to lower the opponent's tempo if they've just got one attacker out front swinging enough for one hit KOs every single turn potentially doing a tapu storm can remove that big threat from the board even though you're not taking prizes you're protecting your greninjas throughout and this can be very valuable to you it's also searchable via brooklet hill i do like it but i can see why he can't make spaces in this list because he's just instead going for e hammers and such uh, it is another two prize Pokemon, which again can be a hindrance for this deck. Hydro Shot is a good attack, bear in mind, and it can be an option in certain matchups. So I wouldn't blame you for playing a Feeny. I have in the past, and I have utilized its GX attack in some games. Espeon EX is another one uh, for Devolve. If you're doing these six damage counters here, there, and everywhere all over the board, it can be a pretty good idea to try and Devolve things, um, seeing as though we're not playing Guzma, of course. So uh, this is a pretty cool option for you. I think mainly this was a tech card for. Uh, Zoropod because it was really hard for you to eventually get through Glycopod GX so it was much better to try and devolve them alongside Zorox at the same time <coughs> to get multiple KOs and with Zoropod decreasing in play because of the hype of Buzzwall and I guess to an extent uh, Zoro Rock as well although that's a fairly 50-50 matchup um, I think in general Zoropod has definitely gone on the decline so you don't need to play this card anymore I don't think so pretty good call there and uh, finally, a card that snuck into, I think, one of the other top 32 lists uh, was a Mew EX, um, trying to just basically be a Psychic-type Pokemon, copying Shadow Stitching uh, to hit for weakness on Buzzwells. So pretty much just a tech card for uh, Buzzwells right now. It's also pretty good for some, uh, the regular Necrozma. So it's a good weakness to hit right now. I think just being a 120 fragile little EX is pretty bad for Greninja overall. Uh, even if you are doing stitching, but it can be a way to cheat your way into a game just by having a big burst of damage that they weren't expecting. Uh, but overall, I think the Mew EX is a bit of a hindrance. So that was really wacky to see that in one of the top 32 placing lists, but I think it's a risk to play that card, to be honest. Uh, from there, there aren't many item cards that he's not choosing to play. He's gone like pretty much as techy as it goes in terms of playing two copies of Max Pot and Enhanced Hammer. I think really the only consideration cards I would think about is a second stretcher and or super odd based on your preference. Uh, and from there, there's only the considerations of counter catcher and or Guzma. I believe one of the other high placing lists did play one copy of counter catcher. Um, typically you are falling behind as the Greninja player, of course, because your Frokies and Frogadiers get eaten up real easily. And counter catcher can be a great way to pick off a really valid and important target from the opponent. And Guzma, again, can be that similar thing. It also, in theory, lets you use a third Greninja break all in one turn if you just go Exodia on someone, but you're probably already winning at that point. But regardless, it can bring up something that you can then target down with an attack, not only with the snipes. Overall, um, Greninja typically gets by without using um, 
those sorts of cards, it just hopes that the Greninja Breaks can do their thing to take the uh, knockouts there. But to be fair, with an increasing amount of 190 HP Pokemon rather than 180, there could be an argument to playing Guzma because the break isn't just doing three clean snipes anymore. It's a lot more awkward to waste a whole 50 damage from one of your snipes just to get a KO, but Greninja is very much a board-centric deck. It eventually wins the prize trade just because the board has depleted from the opponent. Um, so it's really a matter of turns rather than being too concerned about losing damage here and there. As long as you're getting the KOs, that's what really matters in my opinion. So we'll jump into some games now and uh, we'll see who is playing Tina promo. If they have, we extend the hand. If not, we uh, we have a game on our hands. This is one thing with Greninja. Not only can you brick, but people can tech for you as well. So there's a lot of reason to fear playing Greninja, but it keeps on being a deck that just pops up and goes far in tournaments. So uh, you have to respect it at the very least. I think um, in the meta review pre-Madison, I definitely said that I would have been playing Tina promo if I was playing Malamar, I don't think many Buzzrocks need to play it. I think it's a close enough matchup without. Um, but essentially the results have shown that Greninja can storm through some matchups without Tina promo present. So we'll see how many people are actually playing this card. The opponent's given us Brooklyn Hill, which makes me very, very happy. Because now we can Ultra Ball out a Froki, Brooklyn Hill out another one, and be safe to get into a Frogadier next turn. Uh, as long as we get energy. Obviously leading Lele is hideous. But there's nothing you can do about that really. And the opponent's going to go for the early Ultra Ball. Grab themselves a Rock Ruff. Looks like they've probably got a Sycamore in their hand. If they're happy to discard. Uh, the Octillery and the Strong Energy. They get their Remoraid down. And they're going to pass it over to us. So we don't pick up Water Energy or Splash, which is a little annoying. We won't have the option to bubble because uh, we can't move this Lele. We really do need to find ourselves energy here. Um, so I'm going to Ultra Ball. And I think I just want to get rid of another Ultra Ball here. Potentially a Sycamore. I don't want to get rid of Max Potions. They are important in this matchup because of spread damage. From jet punching and such. We have prized one of our Frogadiers. It would be nice to get a uh, an enhanced hammer alongside a water energy, but we can't hope for everything. Well, we can get everything. That's nice. We'll get rid of that. Attach active is the safest. Because if we just attach it to either Froki, they can just KO it. Um, is it worth us getting rid of a choice band or should we save this for uh, save this for float stones I think we save it additionally we have our own Brooklyn Hills and it's nice to field blower off their Brooklyn Hill and put our own one in to get double value and to thin more cards from our deck the opponent is going to grab themselves another baby Boswell Looks like they're trying to play one of the sort of newer Madison lists, which are very high on the non-GX Buzzwell. Not necessarily a bad thing for us. Uh, although they have a lot of hit points, they don't do as much as the GX, naturally. So um, the Greninjas are much more likely to tank hits. However, they do have the Guzma, so they'll be taking out one Froakie here with that uh, Strong Energy and Diancy combo. There you go, Max Elixir. Does fail them. And they're just going to take the knockout here. I think it's still safest for us to promote Lele. Although we can get a sneaky energy drive in later on in the game if we promote the Froki and just go all in. Uh, I think it's too crazy. We gotta be a bit more pessimistic here. I 
I'm going to get rid of... I'm going to allow him to have the choice band because then he can't move it. And it means if we draw into another Brooklet Hill, we could get out of Starmie, seeing as though we only have three Frogadiers. We're actually able to do that. I'm not going to spend the stretcher on just a Froakie. We can do better. Okay, we can get our Star you out at least. And seeing as though we don't have Frogadier, we can do an energy drive play. Don't see why not. It's damage. It's damage, it's deck thinning, it's it's lots of things. This is Greninja Brick though at its finest. And people ask me why I don't play this deck. <laughs> I don't know, we're not doing too bad right now. Greninja always goes behind, you just have to accept that that is always the case. They had a fairly slow turn, we'll take that. Max Potion isn't too shabby. I think I'll still get a Froakie, because either he's KOing one of our bench guys, or he's KOing the Mute, or sorry, the Lele here. Obviously not going to Space Beacon... If I do a max potion play. Um, yep, I'll just attack the active. Just really at the mercy of our deck at this point. <laughs> we can lose to anything. At the very least, we could space beacon bubble next turn. <laughs> I'd rather hold the splash when we actually get a frogadier. We'll see though. We'll see. There's a sledgehammer knockout. And they're three prizes away and the board has not been built very well for us. I mean we could even go for a rain splash KO if we really want to. I mean it's better than bubble because we access an extra card rather than just one draw. Oh, yes. We're back in it, boys. Okay. So that's the two bench spaces. This can just be played. I just want to play as many cards as possible, I think, at this point. I really don't want to whiff again. Let's play this end and try and build. It may be too late, but we'll see. So, we could Super Rod. What we could do is we could Space Beacon first, then Super Rod. This gives us one good out and two bad, but it gives us Ultra Ball to play, at least. If we play the Lele again, though, we pretty much lose. So, I don't think we're... Oops. don't think we're safe. So let's just do this. We are quite far behind. <laughs> Even for Greninja, this is this is feeling pretty bad. Two ends played so far from us. We're gonna need some more of those. Here comes a super rod from the opponent. Getting back Octillery and some fighting energies. They're gonna abyssal hand. And there's the KO. Now then, how tanky are these Greninjas going to be? Mm. 
bubble probably not correct when he has so many Guzmans left. Shadow stitching, I mean, it has to be our play, but it doesn't feel good because they can just GX and they're one prize away. It's all we have, though. Simply put. If we just do a bubble, yeah, it's just it's just not right. Pretty sure we've almost always lost. They've promoted the baby buzz though, that's good for us. It's not likely to KO us. Wow, that's really good for us. That's really good. Don't call it a yeah, I'm not even gonna not even gonna say. <laughs> We do have to attack with this one, unfortunately. Just because of the amount of energy that we have. I guess we could retreat and do it with this one, to be fair. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's retreat. We're definitely going to try and take out these Rockcrofts as they're the threats. 70 hit points is a bit of a shame. But oh well. Shadow Stitching. This is where the game goes into our tempo, hopefully. We'll see what he can do to get out of it. The baby buzzwall has a two retreat cost, so him putting a choice band on it is actually really good for us. He basically needs Guzma Energy Lycanroc to do much this turn, and he didn't evolve any last turn. Is this where the tide turns? Is this where frog boys rule? They have a big Sycamore. Sycamore doesn't get them out of this predicament though. They get rid of a lot of B-strings. Brooklet comes down. Another baby buzz. Man, they play four baby buzz? No, three. Okay. I thought I saw more. <laughs> three is actually more and more standard now, believe it or not. Here's their first elixir, I think, of the game. Whiff. They can evolve to protect their damaged rock rough. They can attach, and we're going to get hit with the 30 again. Oh my god, we actually drew a supporter. Okay, we're in business, boys. You're in buzziness. I think we're just going to Ultra Ball away Super Odd and Greninja for a break. Because this board is all we're getting. It ain't going to be better than this, I tell ya. We'll do this one. Save the choice band for when he actually promotes the GX. Let's shuriken this guy down. Grab back the water. Keep trying to shuriken this guy down. I think we will attach. Uh, I mean, we have the Evo Soda right now. 
Okay, we'll thin our deck. Would have been nice to hit a uh, E hammer here. Pretty much the best we could have hoped for. Now we'll Shadow Stitch, try and make it hard for him to have an energy card to retreat in GX. If he does retreat in GX, that's his only attacker, really. He needs more help from elixirs and such. This is what you mean by this is what we mean by board centric. Although we're very behind on the prize trade, he's threatening one attacker against us. And that attack is guaranteed to go down next turn. Ooh, this elixir's a big deal. If they can build another rock rough to become a lichen rock, that's scary times. Ah, but they're going for Baby Buzz. They have a Cynthia. We can't end them currently, unless we top deck it. Choice Band. Very little impact. They're going to put it on a Diancy. They have a Float Stone, which can go on an Octillery. <coughs> they are having to pay a retreat here to GX us. So they are one attacker away from game, basically. But because they attach to the baby buzz, and we're not going to be going to three prizes, we'll be going to less. So this is doing poor base output right now. So he has to build up another Lycan Rock, really. We currently have only one energy in the discard. Oh, no, we have two. We have two. What else do I want this turn from our deck? Let's have a look. Max Potion doesn't change much. I guess the Rescue Stretcher gives us 10 more hit points on our Froki. We want an end for next turn because his hand size is too big if he doesn't have game. Okay, we'll play uh, We'll play Cynthia. I don't think we need to be super aggressive for Sycamore here with the limited deck size that we have. We do whiff what we're looking for. So we're going to get rid of the Rock Rough as well as the active here. Uh, we can do this. Actually, we want our deck to be thin in case he ends us, right? Yeah. Should probably just get rid of this one as well. We could possibly get a Frogadier from this, of course. Not quite. We could have done our two pings first and actually played N. Probably would have been optimal. Obviously it's uh, 1 in 5, but still. Before our Cynthia, I mean, we could have space beaconed away 1 and gone for that play. Let's see if he has a means of doing 70 with a Guzma. Oh, sorry, 60 with a Guzma. He's already played his beast energy. Maybe we can get away with it. We are two prizes away. This is a ping away. So actually, we win next turn with the the current board state, at least. So if he can't do 60 this turn, we actually win. Greninja comebacks, man. What a day to be alive. And it's so, bu so bizarre to say, like, if this player can't do 60, but... Stitching lock is just insane. <laughs> it's just bizarre. If he stalls a Froki or a Starmie without a KO, that still prevents us getting game because we can't do two break snipes. So there is that. Looks like they failed their Brooklet. We stayed out of beast ring range, which is pretty cool. Stops him doing the uh, swing around Guzma for game. Even though two beast rings were gone, three is typically the number they play. Here is the Guzma. So I guess he's just hoping for runner, runner Guzma.
Yeah, there's the 30. We're going to heal and evolve. Space Beacon one away to get two. Seems like a good deal. And they concede. What a comeback. Just fog things, I guess. Pretty bizarre that they went so heavily on the baby Boswell. Typically, Boswell decks are now playing three non-GX and two GX Boswell. I'm surprised they didn't try to build any GXs. They also had a tough rub of the green with Elixirs. Bear that in mind. But, yeah, we also missed Frogadier uh, for a turn and had to do an energy drive play. So, we got a little bit lucky to eventually get in into an N. But we weren't flawless and we were still, still able to take the W. So that's the power of shadow stitching in a nutshell right there. Let's get one more game I think I only have time for because I'm also streaming today. And playing Greninja gives me heart palpitations. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want to be playing it for too long. Greninja games are also long. Oh my god, double Lele start. Game. <laughs> It just is it, is great to see this happen because it just reaffirms my faith that I don't want to play Greninja myself. <laughs> Looks like we're up against another fighting deck. That's pretty much the ladder right now. Pretty much the format right now is just fighting decks. Okie deck. Let's see if we're up to the task. So despite a Remoraid do-nothing turn, they eventually got something going. Nice top deck from us. Hmm. Fine, we'll spend a choice band. Just to have higher odds. Oh look, we're dead drawing again. Welcome to Greninja. <laughs> okay, they have Floatstone. They can turn two GX if they want to. Would make me quite sad. They're actually gonna try and take a Froakie out by the looks of things. They still have artillery. Seems they attached a basic fighting here though, means they probably can't KO us. They retreated before Abyssal Hand, which is really weird. But oh well. Not bailed out. Do you get an energy though? I mean, we could pay retreat and bubble. Sure. Sure. Nailed it. So they need to get Diancy and a strong this turn. And then they get to take two prizes. And we basically have one top deck to get out of this. Just another day in the life of Greninja. If we just if we if this hand like depletes into nothingness, we can just uh, have a third game. Looks like they don't want to risk trying to hit us strong, so they're just going to Guzma this guy instead. Giving us another bubble, so every cloud has a silver lining. But yeah, we're in a lot of trouble here.
Hey. We did it. Now I just need to top deck an N after this. Uh, is it worth us putting back the stuff? I mean, we do want this, but we need to top deck a supporter. So we can't super rod <laughs> as much as we want to. So you can attach a strong active and just do a jet punch KO or a beast energy active. If it oh wow, still whiffing on special energies. So that's pretty good for us. Also gonna play Guzma here. Guzma Lele is two prizes, of course. Could be Goosmering even a Frogadier just because it doesn't have a splash energy on it. But no, he wants to take two prizes ASAP. Hence us needing to draw an N now. <laughs> <coughs> Literally now is where we need to draw an N. <coughs> Any less, I fear we have lost. But we'll see. <laughs> well then <laughs> oh what a great game this is okay I still think I'll do this I'll do the super odd later I think well alright then let's give it a whirl you have to hope they don't have an energy in their hand for a GX attack. Or a Guzma in their hand to retreat and attack again. I will put down Brooklet because I don't see a reason not to. Doesn't give him anything. I don't think we're taking anything out of it. I mean, uh, it's such a liability. It's hard enough for us to evolve all of these Greninjas. It's less cards in our deck, so we can actually draw a supporter again. How are we back in this position every time we play one? Uh, I think we just got to really be hopeful to win this game. And hope really relies on us drawing out of this. So, We'll, of course, Shadow Stitch so that he can't draw more cards. And hope that these three cards don't give him energy or Guzma. Well, that's pretty good. So again, we need to t we need to top deck an end <laughs> to win. Once again, what a twist of fate this is. Remember that position we were in last turn? Seems to be in that position again. I mean, currently there's no strong energy here. So in theory, we can do it. Just not when we don't, not when we uh, draw this. So now we lose to Guzma every time. We lose to Strong Energy every time or Beast Energy every time. Is Bubble correct so that we only lose to Guzma? He's played all of his Guzmas. Probably all of his Guzmas. I mean, sometimes they play four. What's our alternative? We don't have any damage in this hand. If we bubble, we give him one extra draw with this, potentially. Potentially more. Um, I'm pretty sure we almost always lose. I'm going to stick with Stitch, though. It's on average our safest move, I think. There's the energy, the damage modifier, so that he can KO the active. 
Well, unfortunately, Greninja does break, after all. And uh, that's the risk you run. You can lose 6-0 with Greninja. And that just happened. We achieved, what, two attacks in the game. There were 110 damage over the course of the game. Yeah, not great. But that is going to be Greninja. Uh, test it yourselves if you really want to. Uh, I hope I demonstrated what the deck is capable of, as well as what it is likely to do. I think these are the perfect two games for that. <laughs> so, yeah. Hope you guys all enjoyed. That's Greninja. And hopefully I don't ever have to profile this deck again. Um, yeah. Cheers.